Someone's going to help us better understand the Chinese economy. We're now joined in Hong Kong by Jian Cheng, an economist from Barclays Capital. Thank you very much. And welcome to the show. Let me first by asking you, you know, there's a lot, there was a lot Thank of talk you. last year about the landing in China, which is really more about growth slowing. But that discussion has now turned into more of an inflection point of whether or not growth is actually picking up again. And we want to get your opinion on that. And indeed, actually, we have always held a view that China will have a soft landing. And uh, the latest data, Q4 GDP, 7.9%, slightly better than the consensus 78 confirms that the Chinese growth recovery actually remains on track. And uh, GDP has bottomed in Q3. For this year, we are actually looking for uh, continued improvement in consumption and some more investment project after the new government takes office, and also a stabilizing external demand and export growth to support China and to grow at around 8%. And uh, I would agree that that's around China's potential growth level. Jen, I want to ask you about the, the macro issues, because last year we did talk a lot about what's happening in Europe, the United States, uh, the ongoing recovery that's happening there, and also the slowdown in, in Asia. How much of these more positive numbers are we seeing as reflecting perhaps a, a easing of some of the concerns on the macro front, on the international front, or how much of it, I should say, also is because of domestic consumption? Well, if we look at uh, uh, China's GDP growth by expenditure component, consumption actually remains a stable factor and contributing to more than 50% of China's GDP growth. And investment contributed another 50%, while net export was a drag of the Chinese economy in 2012. So that says that the external demand has remained actually uh, let's say soft or relatively weak and for this year at Barclays we are expecting the global economy to grow at around the same pace of last year so Chinese export growth will continue to face some headwinds from the uncertain external demand but we are looking for around 8% growth so I think it would uh, on balance it would be fair to say that the massive demand has been supporting China's latest recovery and particularly investment uh, and some central government or local government led infrastructure investment project were boosting growth uh, recovery last year and uh, this year uh, this year and we would expect the external demand to stabilize to help to uh, kind of uh, consolidate China's recovery Jan very quickly I want to ask you I mean I, I don't want to put words in your mouth but you mentioned infrastructure you mentioned domestic uh, spending what's your top sector pick for China for our international investors and I'll follow up on that is what is the top issue that you're most concerned about for 2013 Well, I have to say that I'm an economist, so I'm not a strategist for a stock pick. But uh, I would like to uh, mention that uh, our view has been that Chinese uh, growth rebalancing is already happening, and which has been, I mean, so which means that consumption will be an important driver for China's uh, growth. And with the changing Chinese demographics, we will see wage inflation to continue at double-digit pace. And also the government's support and boost for urbanization will also help affordable housing and better social services and as well as improve the income distribution. So all these will actually help the mass market consumption and rather than, let's say, luxury goods consumption. And also, I think what's the most biggest risk for China in the near term, I think government this year needs to balance the fa increasing fiscal and financial risk coming from this uh, surging and uh, shadow banking activities and also the surging local government borrowing seen in 2012. And to balance the risk of that and also to ensure a stable growth. That's the challenge for the government in 2013, I think. Jian Chan, Barclays Capital, thank you very much for helping us better understand these economic numbers.